Linux file permissions for file and directory permissions are built directly into the file system and are really kind of nice if you learn how to use them. So let's take a look at how they work. If I do a directory listing in my directory, uh, ls minus al, I can see there's a list of files and directories in here. Directories you can see begin with the uh, d uh, in the list format. Files begin with the dash. Um, after this d or dash or other character, there are nine characters that indicate what the permissions for that directory or file are. You can see there is an R, a W, and X. R, and W, and X, and R, W, and X. So there are three sets of permissions. The first three permissions are for the owner, whoever the owner is. And you can see the owner also listed right here in this directory list out. So in this case, I'm in the root directory. These files are all owned by root, the root user. They're also owned by the root group. So the first is the owner, and that's a user. Second is the group, the group owner. And the last one is everybody else. And then we're looking at what permissions they have. So <clears throat> to understand this, we need to know what the read, write, and execute mean for both directories and for files. For directories, read permissions mean you can look at the contents of a directory, basically list the directory contents out. The write means that you can create things in that directory, and the execute means you can actually get into the directory. So it is possible that you have read access to a directory, but you can't get into the directory, which is kind of strange. Um, and then there's also situations where you can get into a directory, but you can't list the contents, which also might seem a little bit strange, but it has some great purposes. All right, so when do we want to set permissions? we use the chmod command. And if you want to look at the complete description of what the chmod command can do, you can use man chmod. And that gives you a nice long explanation. It talks about different modes um, for users, um, the owners, groups, uh, everyone else, all the other people, and things like that. Now we can display or write out permissions in two different methods. You can either use um, describing the specific area, which is either the user, the group, or other, or you can use a numerical format. And you can just use uh, three different um, octal numbers that go from zero to seven. Now let's start with the numerical values first. You can see there's a read, write, and execute. So let's go ahead and create a new directory and go into that. So mkdir um, permission, so we'll call it permission. So we're going to this permission directory, and we're going to create a couple of empty files with touch command, touch a, b, c, d, e. And now we do a directory listing, and we can see the permissions. The default permissions right here are read, write for the owner or user, read for the group, and read for everyone else. Of course, you can't get into this directory because it's inside the root directory, and there's no permission to get into there for regular other users. So just the root user can see these. All right, now to change permissions, if I wanted to change permissions for the A file, I can use chmod, and I decide what permissions I want. If I want to change permissions for the, just for the owner or the user, I could do u, and I can do plus, and I can say rwx, or just rw, or just x, and it will add that permission. So if I add x to the A file, and then I do a directory listing again, I can see that now it has the execute bit set on it right here. It was not set before, and so it has changed. Also, it colors them if they're executable in some some directory listings. Okay, so if I wanted to set it so it's just X and not adding the X, I only only want the X. So no read, no write, just execute. I could do this, chmod equals X, A. Now if I take a look at the listing again, you can see now the read and write is gone, 
and the X is there, but, well, they're gone, because it now equals instead of adding. And that might work well for you. Um, one thing to note, though, is if the user or the owner has execute, but they don't have read permissions, but the group and the other have read permissions, then they will also have read permissions by default because they're in the group and they're also other users. So they kind of get everything from everything from their category and below. All right. So now if I wanted to subtract things, I can do that. So if I want to take away the right permission from the owner, from the B file, I can do that. chmod u minus, and it's the right permission for B. So I can take a look at that. And I can see the right permission is now gone. Right there. Okay. If I wanted to say all the permissions in here, all files in this directory get the read and write for the owner, but not, nothing else changes. And I do chmod um, user equals read write for star. That's all regular files, not the ones that start with a dot. Do directory listing, and it's read and write, and just read and read right there. Okay, if I wanted to change two things at once, say I want the the A file to have read, write, execute for the owner, read and execute for the group, and just execute for other, I could do that with a chmod user equals read, write, execute, group equals read, write, and or was it read and execute? And then other equals execute for the A file. You can see the directory listing. You can see that the permissions have now been changed to match what I told it to change. So you can change permissions that way. You can add, subtract, or equals them to change their permissions. You can also set the permissions using the octal file format, octal number formats. The read is in, it has a value of four. The write has a value of two, and the execute has a value of one. So if I wanted to change the permissions of B to be read, write, and execute for the owner, read and execute for the group, and just execute for other, so it matches the A, I could do that with a numerical format. So ch mod seven because it's four plus two plus one and then read and execute which would be four and one because read is four and execute is one so that would be five right four plus one and then execute is one and b and now we look at it and you can see that now the permissions are matching Okay, so what do these permissions mean for a file? If the file has execute permissions on it, that means that it will run if you try running it. So if I do period slash A, it will try running it. Of course, there's nothing in the file, so it doesn't really do anything. Um, <clears throat> if it is a script, it needs to both be able to execute and it also has to be able to read it because what a script does is it starts executing and the first line in the script tells it which interpreter to use. So it then loads that interpreter and then passes the script as an argument to the interpreter. The interpreter then runs that script name by reading it. So if the interpreter says, if the first line in the script says the interpreter but it does not have read access, then the interpreter will start and the interpreter will try reading the file and it will fail to read it and it will just end. Um, so that won't work. If it is a binary file, so you've written it in C, C++, or some other compiled language, and you compile it down to binary, then running it will run because it's not going through an interpreter, it's going directly, and you do not need the read permission to make it work, although normally you do have it there. Okay, so that's how you set permissions. And let's just take a look at the C directory so you can see exactly what happens with each permission. Chmod. If I do four, 
to 1 for C, what will end up happening is the 4 is the read permission, the 2 is the write permission, and the 1 is the execute permission. So it should have one permission set for each category. So I look at the directory listing right here, and I can see that it is the read, the write, and the execute. And so that's how we do file permissions on Linux machines.